so I've promised to do some mountain biking videos with my dog. I made some a long time ago, but some of my techniques and ideas about mountain biking with your dog has altered in the past uh, four years. So I decided I needed to make some new ones because I've learned a bit and um, I'm a little wiser mountain biking with my dog than I was four years ago. And so is the dog a little wiser. So I'm at a state park. It's beautiful. Can hear cars in a distance, which kind of bites, but I've been off the bike for about four months due to doctor orders. Uh, three months due to doctor orders. I have another month to go, but I got up this morning and said, I've had a really horrible past three days. I've got to get out on the bike. And Cookie's been itching to get out on the bike. And how I know that is when we're out hiking and she sees a cyclist go by, she goes like nuts and gets all excited and looks at me with that look like, come on, are we going? Cookie loves to run. And I know people say that your dog never has to get off leash to experience good exercise, that they can, but you know, unless you can run as fast as your dog, how is your dog ever going to experience a full out run unless they're off leash? And dog parks are great in theory but if you're in the state in the state of not a state of mind but the united states and in the state that i'm living in dog parks are hell forgive my language but they really are because just i don't even want to go into that because i don't want to ruin the good vibe out mountain biking so even Cookie doesn't care for the dog parks too much, so when we go there, she doesn't have a good run out. Very, very rarely. So, and we do agility together, and we do trick training together, but she just really enjoys a good full-out run, and the only way she's going to get that is mountain biking. So here we are today, and so we're going to do a little biking. I'm going to try to do some video of what we're doing, and stop and talk along the way. Let me show you what I, how I bike with her on leash though, because holding a leash while you're biking with your dog is insanely dangerous and stupid. So please don't do it. So here's my bike, my dog, and this is what I use. This is called Cycle Leash by Pet Ego. I have done some modifications to it. I put reflector tape on it in case we ever have to go alongside the road. It does reflect. This is the clamping system for it. It does come off and you can put it around the other side. It has a peg on both sides. Another modification I made is I put a piece of pipe foam around this peg sticking out so if my leg does hit it, it doesn't hurt so bad. It has, this part here is rubber with a clip, but I need to modify it for my dog because she's a little shorter than what they anticipate for the biking dog. So I attached another piece of rubber to it and another snap um, clip. I put foam around the bottom of this clip and around this clip that it came with so that if it swings around and hits her she's not getting hit with the metal clip. Now this is a great contraption. I've tried a couple different brands. This is the only one I can recommend. However, I don't know if they're still making it because when I wanted to buy a spare one they said they weren't making them anymore, but I could find it on Sierra Trading Post, and I did. And I, when I found it, I bought two of them. <laughs> so I'd have a spare and a spare spare. It does not work on all my bikes. While it attaches well to all of my bikes, and I have five bikes, um, it doesn't work as well with all of my bikes. Number one, I never tried it on my road bike because I would never ride on the road with the dog unless it was an emergency. And we were out in the woods and the only way to get to where we needed to go to get back or whatever is we had to do a road ride. But that being said, this Harrow that I'm riding now is my son's old bike and it works with the bar, the doggy bar, the best out of all my bikes. I also have a rigid trek that we use as my gravel bike and camping bike because it's got the trailer hitch and everything on it and it's a very lightweight but strong bike that works well with the doggy bar 
I have a specialized SX Trail 2. <laughs> That's an awesome bike. <laughs> Just thinking about that bike brings a smile to my face. It works well with the bar also, surprisingly. It's full suspension and the way the back end is designed, it works reasonably well with the bar. My favorite bike of all time is my GT LTS 3000. I guess I smile again. That bike is like, you know, your, your first, well, no, I can't say that. It's just my favorite bike out of every bike I've ever owned and ridden and tried. And it's very old school. And I've had, I have a very good friend of mine is a bike shop owner. He goes, well, try this bike and try this bike and try this. And he's always trying to push the newest bike on me. And I'm like, yeah, it's great. It's a great bike. It's a great bike, but it still doesn't compare to the GT LTS 3000. Those of you that are my age and older should remember that bike. It's an awesome bike. The doggy bar doesn't work well with it. And maybe when I get home, if I remember, I'll put in a picture of it, why it doesn't work. The way that back end is designed, the seat post slopes, slopes. It's got a really, really st st steep slope to it. It's not like most um, bikes where the, the, the seat post is kind of up or it might slope a little bit. This one slopes a lot. And when you attach that bar to it, the bar angles downward and no matter how you position the clamp either your leg is hitting the bar or the bar is hitting the bike whenever the susp suspension compresses so while it's my favorite bike it just doesn't work with the dog bar now why do I bring the dog bar out on every bike ride this is why because one I live in a state where it's a leash law state so your dog is supposed to be leashed no matter what. However, I do sometimes let her off leash. Did I just admit that? I do sometimes let her off leash, but I have the leash bar attached to the bike every time I mountain bike with her in case I see other people, I can clip her up. I see other dogs, I clip her up to show respect for other people who may not like dogs being on the trail, even though she's very well trained and will just go right by them and totally ignore them. Out of respect, I leash her out. If I'm in a park where the park rangers are like, hey, I've seen you with her, she's well behaved, you clean up her poo, she, you know, she's good, then, then that's so fine. You know, don't tell anybody we said it was okay to leave her off leash. But if we're in a park where the park rangers are like, we love your dog, but if you see her unleashed, we're going to give you a ticket. Then she stays leashed. But that's enough. Yep, yep, yep. Go ride. Bye. One last thing before we start riding again. Even though you're out mountain biking with your dog, be prepared to clean up after your dog and carry it out. Now, listen. Between me, you, and God, if your dog runs 20 feet off trail and poops out in the woods, out of sight, out of mind, I don't care. But if your dog is running next to you on the trail or attached to your bike on leash on the trail and your dog poops, even though you're on a mountain bike, I don't care. I want you to pick up that poop and carry it out with you. So what I do, let me show you what I do. On the front of my bike is my poop bag holder. And to it, I took a little piece of cord and a little clip. If I don't want to put it in my backpack or my pocket, which is understandable. So she poops. I pick it up, put it in a bag, tie it off. I put it in a second bag, just for double protection. And I clip it up good and tight here, and that bag will hang right here. Right here. And it can swing around. I don't care. And I have done some very, very long, aggressive rides with a poop bag hanging there. And you double bag it. And it'll be fine. I recommend Mutt Mitt um, poop bags. M U T T M I M I T or M I T T. I don't know. But if you look it up, it might just be one T and one T. I don't know. Look it up online. Mutt Mitt best bags. Okay. Cookie, ready to go? Ready to go? She's ready to go. Yeah, you should never record while you're riding, unless you've got a phone holder, and I don't. But we're taking it really slow. 
And I just wanted to show you how here we are on the trail. And there's my little puppy dog. Well, maybe not. My little puppy dog running alongside me. Well, right now she's trotting. Oop, I almost run into you. That was pretty bad. So I know uh, you're going to ask me what breed of dog makes the best biking dog. And the truth is, any dog can be a biking dog. But like with anything else, when it comes to dogs, you have to set your expectations. And your expectations may not be what the dog can deliver. But I know a fellow who has a Yorkie as a biking dog, and he'll go out and do a two-hour bike ride with that Yorkie. But he'll stop every 15, 20 minutes and give the dog a five or 10 minute rest. And you have to learn to go at the dog's pace, not make the dog go at your pace. And you also have to be a smart um, exercise partner for your dog because some dogs will run themselves to death next to you. So you have to be smart and you have to know how to pace the dog and slow down and stop and rest because a dog might not be smart enough to do it. So, um, I don't know if I want to get into training in this video because I just really want to come out and play today, but I did want to do a little bit of videoing on mountain biking with your dog. So you have to be safe and carry extra water for your dog have a first aid kit for your dog, bring boots for your dog. Um, I recommend every dog to wear a bell, whether they're off leash or not when you're biking. So other cyclists, other people on trail can hear you coming. If you're on a mountain biking trail, everybody's going a lot faster than if it's just a just hiking trail. And if it's a multi-use trail, you're going at a faster pace than other people. And when your dog has a bell on their collar, it just alerts people that you're coming and they can jump out of the way or you'll know, warn you that they're there. It also, I like to think it helps to chase the wildlife away. Um, not always though. <laughs> um, they should have a yellow safety vest or orange safety vest so people can see them better. And on your dog bike attachment, regardless of what brand you get, the part that attaches to the dog's leash should always be rubber for some stretch and that extra piece that I added in to modify it and make it a little longer for Cookie because one she's shorter and two to give her more room to go around obstacles on tight trails is actually a, a safety device in that if I fall off something and I go, the bike goes one way and she goes the other way, it will snap. And I've had it snap when her and I were going over a bridge and I, I had a stupid moment and I slipped and she actually fell off the bridge and I, in one direction, I fell off on the other direction and that, that rubber piece snapped. I had to put in a new piece. 
So um, keep that in mind. And the other thing is never, ever, ever mountain bike with your dog attached to a collar. Not unless you want to really damage your dog forever no collars it should be a harness and it should be a harness a harness that's made in such a way that's good for pulling not that she pulls okay she's i've trained her to not pull but sometimes her speed and my speed doesn't always match up or i've got to swerve around something and she's going straight or she wants to swerve and i'm going straight um you want that harness to be um to be low on her chest not around her neck in any way and to fit properly and the other thing is your dog has to understand that when you're coming towards a tree that they have to stay on the same side of the tree as you are. You can't go around one side tree and them go around the other side if they're leashed up. So your dog needs to understand that either intuitively or teach them. And that's it for training because I want to go ride and I don't want to play on the videos with you guys anymore. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'll finish this up another day. Bye. Even Cookie's like, can we go now? Can we go now? Let's go, Mom. Okay, a couple of the things I felt like I wanted to say, because I might forget to put it in a video later. If your dog has any kind of reactivity towards other people or dogs or bikes, um, he shouldn't be off leaf leash while out there, okay? He needs to stay leashed up. Um, if your dog is super friendly and not re non-reactive to dogs, people, and bikes and you know if he's friendly but I tell you I now I've mentioned this in other videos I've had so many problems with people going oh my dog is friendly but they weren't they were fearful maybe they weren't aggressive but they were fearful which made them act in a, an aggressive manner um, or maybe they were friendly towards their neighbor's dog but they took offense to cookie or me or my bike and we've been chased by dogs that were oh he's friendly and this dog was not trying to be friendly with us at all he was they were very aggressive okay but anyway enough of that so keep that in mind a couple other tips i want to show you attached to a spare water bottle cage on my handlebars you can attach it wherever you want i have this is a treat dispenser dispenses treats and anytime i call her back to me and put her on leash she gets a treat every time so that she will never regret coming back to me and getting put on the leash that's why if she's off leash and she's out there playing and i can call her and snap her back to the leash snap attach her back to the bike she comes without a problem every time i don't have to chase her don't have to scream at her because every time i bring her back and attach her she gets a treat also the other thing is when i do take the leash off of her i hook the Flip to the pin back here so it's not this time. The other thing I have next to my treat dispenser is a whistle for if she is um, focused on wildlife. Um, I can blow the whistle at her because the whistle is an interrupter, it breaks her concentration. The other thing is I have a bike bell, not only for other people. Oh, see, she looked at me like, Mom, you rang the bell. She has been taught that when I ring the bell, she comes back to me immediately. And the reason why is because if I'm going up a hill and I am really out of breath, but I need to call her back to me for some reason, I just ring the bell and she comes like a bullet running back to me. Okay, that's enough. Now we're going to go ride some more. Whatever bike, dog, attach, bike, dog attachment you decide to use, make sure that if you lay the bike down, the attachment isn't so short that the dog gets crushed under your bike. So when I lay my bike down, there is plenty of room length to that attachment that Cookie can get out from underneath the bike. And believe me, if I start to go over, she knows to move away from me and not get crushed under me. The other important thing is that um, when you give your dog water while you're out on the trail, do not allow them to fill up on the water. A uh, couple little sips and stop and wait. And, you know, give a, a lot of little sips. Um, just let them lap a couple times frequently as opposed to 
running and running and running and then you let them fill up. You do not want your dog running with a full belly of water. Okay, um, just like you shouldn't exercise your dog after they've eaten. They need at least a couple of hours to digest before you take them out for some any st strenuous exercise because they could get bloat. If you don't know what bloat is, look it up, bloat in dogs. And be careful. So even in hot weather, I will stop very frequently and give her little sips of water and even put some water on her paws to help her cool down. But do not let them just gulp it, gulp it, gulp it, gulp it. You'll be sorry. Want some water? Come on, cookie. Come, have some water. <laughs> have some water. She does not want any. Okay. You sure you don't want any water? See how she backed away and turned her head away? It means no. If she does want water, I say you want water and she licks her lips. Nope, definitely doesn't want any. Um. The other thing it's important to teach your dog about not pulling on the bike. That is while the dog is attached and you're riding the bike, you don't want the dog to pull. Um, it's gonna knock you off balance and it's just rude biting anyway. But it's also important to teach your dog that if you get off your bike and lean your bike up against a tree or something and the dog is still attached that they must not pull the bike because they'll pull the bike over on them and they could get hurt. So. If I take, if I get off my bike for some reason, maybe I got to go pee or whatever, or to pick up dog poo, and I park my bike against a tree, my dog knows to stay nailed in the spot I told her to stay and not to pull that bike down. And she's been taught that and pretty much knows it instinctively because the first time your bike, your dog pulls your bike down on top of them, they're going to freak out and be scared of the bike and you don't want that. So. Uh, yeah, that's important. Teach your dog that too. But go out there, have fun, and um, I'll do another video soon talking about um, 
physically and mentally conditioning your dog for biking together and breeds of dogs that, you know, I think any breed of dog can be a, a trail dog. Um, to set your expectations, but I, I do have preferences and um, And I'll talk about some training and stuff But for now we're just for some fun just to hopefully whet your appetite for biking with your dog and um, Be safe and be courteous to others. Okay <laughs> Be blessed. Go play with your dog <laughs>